Step two, vacuum. We're going to start a discussion of the number states or Fox states with the vacuum. And we ask one strange question. Is the vacuum empty? Classically speaking, yes, yes, of course it is empty. That's what vacuum means. There is nothing. Therefore, it is empty. We will see that quantum mechanics and quantum optics tells us a completely different answer. And also, it's a very good way of uh, getting used to the, uh, uh, how to use and do calculations with the creation and annihilation operators. So let's begin by computing what's the average of the electric field when the state of the field is in vacuum. Here's an expression for our electric field. We've got I times the polarization vector times the scalar, which we are calling uh, E1, corresponding to one photon amplitude. And then we've got this expression uh, um, inside the brackets containing an annihilation operator and a creation operator with their corresponding exponentials uh, I k dot r and I minus I k dot r. And what we are interested in, what is the field when the state is in vacuum? This is a bit of a strange question, but we will see quantum mechanically, it makes a lot of sense. So we compute the average. We know how to write the state uh, of vacuum. It's just ket zero. So the average is given by this expression. We substitute for our electric field operator, and we get this seemingly complicated uh, expression. But really the important parts in this step are how does A act on vacuum and how does A dagger act on vacuum. So let's start with A and apply it to vacuum. The definition of A acting on the lowest eigenenergy state of a simple harmonic oscillator, in this case electromagnetic vacuum, is that it annihilates it. In other words, A applied to ket zero is equal to the number zero, meaning the first term vanishes. How about the second term, a dagger applied to vacuum? Well, this one doesn't annihilate it. It, in fact, increases the energy of the field by one, creating one photon and moving us to uh, number state one over here. But we have said that the number states form an orthonormal basis, meaning when we compute the inner product between this zero and then this one, after application of a dagger, we get zero. They are orthogonal. In other words, the average of the electric field is zero. We have seen a very similar result when we are talking about the massive single harmonic oscillator, simple harmonic oscillator. So does that mean that the field is zero? No, only its average, meaning there could still be fluctuations. So we have to check that. And the fluctuations, as we have seen before, are given by the standard deviation of E. We write that the fluctuations delta E are equal to the following expression. It's the square root of the average of E squared minus the square, uh, square of the average E. And we have just computed this uh, average of E. This is just zero. So in order to get the fluctuations, all we have to do is compute the average of E squared when the field is in vacuum. Let's do that. All we have to do is just follow the following calculation. So the average of E dot E is given by this. I squared gives us minus one. That's where this minus comes from. The ve polarization vector is not present in, in this line because uh, uh, epsilon vector dot epsilon vector is equal to one. And we have the one photon amplitude E1 squared and then this long expression over here. So again, we follow the same strategy that we did a few slides ago. Let's see how A squared acts on vacuum. Even applying the annihilation operator once destroys the vacuum, meaning the first term disappears. How about the third term? We see that A appears on the right as well. So applying A to zero also destroys that term. So that term goes away. Now let's look at the final term, A dagger squared. That will bring us to uh, uh, gets, uh, to number state two, which is orthogonal to the vacuum zero over here. So taking the inner product between them, the last term also disappeared. disappears. All we are left with is this term over here, minus a, a dagger. So let's write that down. And using the commutation relation, we can rewrite it in normal ordering. 
Normal ordering means that all the daggers appear on the left and all the non-daggers, the annihilation operators, appear on the right. Let's do that and we get the following expression. A, a dagger is equal to a dagger a plus one. We see that if we apply a dagger a, which is just a number operator, on zero, we get zero. So the first term disappears and we are left with the following result for our uh, fluctuations. So the average of E squared when the field is in vacuum is not zero, it's given by the one photon amplitude squared. So we see just like in the case for a sim simple harmonic oscillator, even the quantum field, quantum electric field when it's in vacuum has fluctuations and that's because it has finite energy. So what, what we can do is rewrite these fluctuations of E in terms of the position and momentum quadratures. This is just a fancy name for these operators Q and P, which are the real part and the imaginary part of the complex electric field amplitude and are given by these expressions here. And it leads us to the following expressions for the fluctuations delta Q and in, in the position quadrature and the fluctuations delta P in the momentum quadrature. When we multiply them together, what we recover is that delta Q times delta P is equal to h bar over 2. We see that this is another example of a state that minimizes the uncertainty relations. In other words, it saturates the Heisenberg uncertainty relation. It achieves the lowest possible bound permitted by nature. We will see that this property is only true for vacuum and not for other number states. So as soon as we add one or two or more photons into our field, the fluctuations will be larger than this minimum value of h bar over two. So all of this seems like very easy calculations, but what does it have to do with real experiments? Fine, vacuum is not empty, so what? It turns out that this fact that vacuum is not empty has tremendous consequences for many areas of quantum mechanics. For us, what's very important are the first two. Vacuum is responsible for spontaneous emission of atoms. When we prepare atoms in their excited state and leave them be for a certain amount of time and they spontaneously decay into a lower state emitting a photon in the process. This is the basic principle be behind single photon sources which are crucial for quantum communication. In the next lesson, lesson 13, we will see that vacuum is also very important in describing quantum beam splitters and manipulating single photons of light. And there are other physical effects which we will we'll just mention but not really comment on such as Casimir effect or the lamp shift of atoms and uh, atoms energy levels. All of these effects can be observed in laboratory and have been. Therefore, showing that the vacuum and its uh, fluctuations is not just a mathematical curiosity, but actual phenomenon that can be observed in a lab. This concludes our discussion of the vacuum. So what follows next is when n equals 1, in other words, a single photon state of the electric field. See you in the next step.